I am a painter of people, and I love the psychology behind people. I love to figure out who they are and where they are, and that comes in line with animals, too. During the years, I started out as a portrait artist. I've been, uh, I started on my lunch hour during um, when I quit smoking, believe it or not, at the age of uh, 24. I mean, I had always drawn in high school and through my youth, but, uh, you know, I was at one of those money-making jobs that um, at a computer company and uh, decided to pick up the pencil as it was at that time in 1982. And I ended up having a long list of everyone who wanted to have portraits of dogs, cats, animals, um, people especially. I mean, of course, most of them were people. But uh, I, through the years, became very fond of uh, the animal portraits because they became something that I got to do for me because uh, the people, you know, I love doing people, definitely. Um, but there's something that everyone loves about an animal, something that warms your heart. That, so these are just kind of fun um, so here are my paintings. And every painting that I do, animal or person, brings out that character that I see in them, my perception. But what I look for is something that is um, beneath the surface. It's definitely, I'm always talking to my clients and um, reacting with their eyes and, and looking at them and their character and their mannerism and trying to really get a sense of, of you know, what they bring to this earth, to this planet. Um, every creature is so significant in its own right and I just absolutely love what I do. This piece was done um, with uh, my brother in mind because my brother took the photograph and my brother Mark died of cancer in uh, February of 2012 and um, it was the first time I've ever had to experience anybody close to me passing and uh, when he gave me these photographs to work from um, something we shared going out and uh, photographing horses together and experiencing the opportunity to be with them um, but when he g came back with these photographs t for me to paint from I was so moved by the stallion and when I started painting it just this last month um, I realized that this is the grace the strength the, um, the beauty that my brother brought to this world and um, and the way he passed, you know, so this piece is very special to me. It's called Warrior St Stallion. In getting to know my subject even more and uh, really embracing the um, equestrian life and uh, I wanted to really capture what I see going on so um, polo is another one of the events that I just absolutely love I mean the power in a horse and the connection between the human and the horse is just incredible and it's so fun to watch the dynamics between you know what what the the rider does with the horse and how the horse responds and you know yet they have a personality of their own and and it really comes through in so many ways and I just enjoyed this piece so this is called polo this is Quinby one of uh, Stacy's two horses and the day that my brother and I went out in and photographed these two horses together was you know one of those special memories that I'll never forget um, because not only because my brother was there um, with me but <laughs> the character of these horses um, the personality um, and Stacy they just interacted so well and at one point it was so uh, wonderful how they took off and um, you know, they, they kind of 
weren't supposed to, <laughs> of course, but she was letting them roam so that we could photograph them with her and, and letting them just kind of um, be natural. And they knew that they were out of their um, their pasture. And so they were in between pastures. And at one point, um, the horse that was uh, a female that was in the other um I guess she was in season um, the week before. She was in a, um, a fenced area next to where we were, and all of a sudden, these two horses, you know, they were they were over by her, and they were, um, you know, showing off, and uh, then all of a sudden, they took off, and took off running, and, and uh, Quimby actually got pretty far around where he wasn't supposed to be, but in the process, we got to take photographs of them, and as they came running back around, um, <laughs> it was really, it was really kind of, it was really neat because at one point I'm standing right in front of them and they're running towards me around a building and um, towards me. And I kind of looked at Stacy and I looked at the horses and then I really wanted to get the shot. And so I stayed there and, you know, I was, I was definitely very safe. They're wonderful um, creatures you know the the whole uh, their majestic sensibility um their they just really had this um playfulness about them that that was awesome that i could capture it that i could stand there and and i was i had no fear once i looked at them i knew that they were choosing to to go by me um and it was it was just fun so that's where i got the shot for free but this was on the run This is Bentley, Stacy's other horse. Uh, it was such a fun day. I wanted to talk a little bit about the process that I used. I became a colorist somewhere around 1996. I started out painting as a classical realist. I studied with a Russian master, Igor Babylov, and um, his work is pretty monochromatic. Um, but at a certain point, I really understood that I love color so much that um, I had a teacher come into my studio, just one of those God things, you know, um, she showed up in my life and, and she started, it turns out she had gone to school in France and, uh, where Matisse and a lot of the colorists came from, um, so he, I mean, she actually, um, spent a summer with me and pulling paint across the white palette, just experiencing what that color looks like when you really see it against a white surface. And at that point, I quit doing um, the underneath layers, doing the grisailles that I had been doing, um, and just really experiencing my color against a white canvas. Um, I really love the process. I still do the glazing. I still do all of the layers. I, I really appreciate the sense of depth that you can get, but I, all, I really like to have the brilliance of the color show from the white surface below. Capturing a mood of the morning or um, or the creature of the person even, you know, when I'm working on any subject. This is Brewer. Brewer was half draft. Um, he was just another horse in another pasture um, one of the days that I was photographing uh, the other horses. And his, his personality was like this. In fact, uh, the owner had said, you know, he's just like this um, surf dude, you know. He had this hair hanging down in his face, and and he, he just was just this mellow, laid-back horse that um, wasn't very old, but he was just had this personality that was um, that was wonderful and, and so peaceful and yet so huge. He was massive. Um, so this piece right here, I kind of caught the feeling of that morning, um, my sense of of what the sun was doing on his back and on his body, um, how the shadows became cool and the war and the warmth of the light was so strong. Um, yet it was so early that there was this real peace. So that's what this piece is.
these two are um, these are the two horses together. Um, Stacy is on the right. Um, these are her horses. I ended up selling these two pieces to her after I was done creating this collection. Um, or during the process of creating this collection because it's not done yet. Um, I just really love these two pieces. They're a little bit smaller than the other ones have been. Um, just a different size and I, I really am enjoying the long thin canvases. There's a sense of, of getting really personal with the characters within the paintings but me having fun with my color, getting the depth of the field, enjoying my space and letting that bright color come out because uh, there's that side of me that that is so um, analytical and um, it, you know the intelligent side that, that really wants to understand the nature of a character, um, anatomy, light, um, everything. I want to understand it all and, and the way that color um, works. I mean, you look at the shadow uh, in the back, um, in the back of um, Quimby and Stacy, and and you look at the reds and the purples in that shadow. And I mean, I just have a lot of fun with color. Uh, I'm currently teaching a color theory class, and and the class is just really enthralled. So um, these two pieces are some of, two of my favorites, and um, they've sold already. So. I will be painting more. During the course of my career, I've had many different subjects. And I'd get into painting portraits, and as i go out to my client's house, I'd photograph um, them and, and do, you know, the photo shoot, which has consisted of, uh, back in the days of 35 millimeter, um, you know, at least, you know, six rolls of film a lot of times, and now it consists of, you know, hundreds, <laughs> because I have that opportunity to use the digital. It's wonderful. But every now and then I'm approached by somebody who has a wonderful gift in mind and they want it to be a surprise. So I get the snapshot and I create a painting from, you know, the photographs. Um, it's been a wonderful experience because I've recognized people on the street or in, you know, when I've seen them out of the situation um, from my paintings because I knew that I, I had gotten them so well, even if I hadn't met them after the commission was done. Um, so in this case, I was approached by um, the husband of uh, the owner of these horses, and this was her uh, gift for uh, Christmas or birthday, I can't recall, but um, I know that they absolutely loved it, and he was so excited to find something that his wife would love so much. So it was a wonderful experience, and um, I like doing things like that. So. This is Misty and Aslan. About 10 years ago, I was invited to teach in Texas, um, Sonora, Texas. Uh, wonderful painters down there invited me down to teach. And um, one of them, in fact, this was the second year that I think I had gone out there. And Mary, uh, She's a wonderful equestrian horse, ranch um, dog, people, artist herself. Um, anyway, she brought me down there and asked me if I would like to go horseback riding one day. And, and <laughs> I said, sure, I'd love to. Um, being from California and, and not getting um, down to Texas to a ranch, um, she said to bring a hat. And I really had that concept wrong. <laughs> But anyway, I, I got over the, the hat and learned we were going for a 3,000 goat roundup. So they um, they took me out there, and of course the dogs and uh, this fellow, their hired hand, and her husband did all of the work, and she and I rode on the, you know, two horses behind them. And it was it was very fun, very educational as to what they do when they, they round up um the goats and it was it was really a neat experience and after we got done moving the um the goats um 
He bent down, the hired hand bent down to pet the dog to um, thank the workers. So that's what this piece is about. It sold immediately and then I repainted it. Um, I have since then acquired the painting back and um, because of the hard time. But um, so I have this painting available and I also have cheek clay. This is done from the same cowboy, same horse. Uh, right before we left, um, I snapped a shot when they were having this discussion about who was boss. And um, I think the hired hand, uh, you know, he won because obviously, you know, see, you saw the horse later in the last painting. So he had just been broken. The horse had just been broken like uh, a week before, they said. So he was wonderful, and it was a great experience, but I just kind of wanted to capture this moment of, um, which I call the Dance of Wills, and this one has been purchased. So uh, it is no longer available, but I wanted to share it with you because I love showing the motion. For me, uh, getting that... Uh, sense of movement in a painting is so important um, along with color along with anatomy along with the you know the analyzation of exactly how to use color and how light acts and um, all of the other things one of the, my favorite things is to capture motion in a painting the one on the left is is again uh, Quimby from uh, the day that I took all the photographs with my brother and Quimby was uh, a beautiful, beautiful horse, and his color was just so, um, his coat was just gorgeous, you know, so it was fun to paint him because he's got so much high contrast from sheen from the healthy coat, and, and that tail, when the tail was up in the air, I mean, I just, this painting right here, this photograph of Quimby just reminded me so much of how happy he was, and and what a great relationship Stacy had with him. This one is available. The one on the right is um, one of the first uh, horses paintings I did in this series, and uh, it's since then um, been sold. But one of the best parts of this is just capturing the movement, and I plan on doing a lot more multiple horse paintings with a lot of movement in them. Again, we have, um, this is an Arabian, running Arabian, a uh, beautiful piece that uh, has brilliant purple on the edges. Um, um, unfortunately, I don't believe this photograph shows it well enough, but um, this piece has uh, really got a sense of um, just getting lost in the canvas, like the canvas, like your world is opening up. Um, it's a fun piece, very bright and lively, um, especially with the Arabian. You know, I learned that Arabians have one less vertebrae than other horses, and it's been an incredible, incredible journey getting to know all the different species of horses. And um, just, you know, beyond the character, I love the anatomy. You know, I've, I've got a multiple of things that bring me to this world and bring me to this uh, subject. So this is just another one, a fun piece. I create commissions just for you. I've talked a lot about that already. Um, I enjoy doing what I do, and what you'll see from here forward are some of my portraits. Through the years of painting portraits. I've had many experiences, um, all wonderful, uh, interesting. You know, I've had it down to the point where um, the wife agreed that all three kids looked uh, gorgeous and she really thought it was beautiful and the husband um, felt like there was something wrong with the smile just ever so slightly. So I get the clients every now and then that really want to help me um, solve some of the things that they feel 
are um, just a little different. And I'm okay with that. You know, I work well with people. I enjoy what I do. And creating a portrait that looks exactly like the person that they love or they want to be remembered is... Um, it's a gift, and it's, and often you're only off by a millimeter from what they want. Um, sometimes you can read a photograph if you're working from a photograph. Um, in that case, I was working from life. But even if you're working from a photograph, the photograph doesn't, you know, if it's posthumous, use photographs often. Um, but you are, you really have to get a sense of what that person looks like three-dimensionally. Creating a portrait is a lifetime, a once in a lifetime experience, and I say this because what I do with my um, with my work is I really make sure that I, you know, I not only take what I can do for them, but I I want to bring in what my client or, or what the owner of this future painting is going to get out of it. So. I spend a lot of time talking to um, the person who I'm going to work with or the people who I'm going to work with, trying to figure out, you know, where are they going to hang it, what is the meaning of this present, and what's the story behind the person or the animal that I'm painting. I really want to know the story because when I get that, I can actually feel it in the painting, and I and it, it makes it, I, I don't know. I've heard that uh, people have told me that there's much more character in my painting. Um, they're more than um, they get to see usually and and that the person feels alive. So it's an incredibly unique tre and treasured gift. I mean, I've had, I've done hundreds of them for people and it's just absolutely a fantastic experience because I get to see the excitement afterwards when the, from the person who... Um, who receives this and I get to hear the stories of how surprised they were or or um, I get to be with the clients when they get to see me going through the process and I get to see it hung in their home and it's just such an incredible experience um, my clients end up being my friends so often um, the history of the subject uh, I include I had one client who who um, really embraced this, and um, every book in their library was titled for something, uh, and I painted the library behind the family of four. Um, every book was titled for something that was special to them, so I rewrote all of the titles, and and I included all of the um, the memorabilia, you know, photographs of mom and dad that weren't actually in the room. Yeah, I, I tend to to like to uh, embrace all the ideas that could, could tell a story because the, the element of every painting should be the story behind it, the story that it tells. I create custom paintings exactly the way that uh, you want them. Um, uh, I try to come up with as many unique ideas about how to put the personal sentiment into the painting, um, you know, including heirloom objects and uh, family symbols. Um, in this piece here, um, this horse was a rescued uh, racehorse, and I am donating the piece in December for their fundraiser um, to help save some of the racehorses that don't belong on the track. And um, this is Dublin. He was two years old, and oh my gosh, what character he had. Just a gorgeous horse, so I'm really thrilled that um, I had the opportunity to paint him. Um, you get many different um, opportunities to put sentiment on, into a subject, uh, into a painting, and... Um, it's always fun to hear the stories that come in when I get to um, learn about the families and try to figure out how to put those heirlooms and those symbols into the painting. These are some examples of uh, my dog portraits through the years. I've done cats too as well, but um, this kind of 
uh, fun. You get to see my pastels. Um, the center and bottom four are all pastels. They're a lot quicker sketch, a little bit more unfinished, done on uh, Mitiente's uh, Canson paper. And um, just kind of wonderful, you know. I really love the expression that you get in eyes, and you can see how much I, I love the eyes by every one of them. <laughs> I just... It's it's the best part, you know. The best part of every portrait is, you know, the entry to the soul, that those eyes, and then you have all the other little bits and pieces that pull the character together. So, the upper right and left are both oil paintings. Done left one was uh, done on commission, and the right one is my dog. There's endless reasons to have a portrait painted. Um, there are constant holidays, constant ideas, and there's always that one special one that just really deserves to have something that is, um, you know, from the heart or um, someone who is, you know, really needs that recognition. This painting I did of Judge Shubb. He is the Chief Judge Justice of the Federal Courts in downtown Sacramento. Um, I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, he wasn't a very tall man, but yet I found a way of, you know, incorporating the chair in, which made him feel um, taller in stature. And I incorporated a few different symbols. The uh, the building behind him is his new quarters. That uh, he has the. I guess the top floor, I don't know. His chambers are in there on the one of the top floors. It's the, it was being built at the time, wasn't quite finished. So we included that in the background. And he wanted his uh, Lincoln sculpture and um, his law books. So we just kind of slid those in. Just to tell a little bit, of, uh, little bit more of a story, I set him off a little bit to the right because... I didn't want to make him a bullseye. Every portrait that you come to, um, not everyone, but um, a lot of them you come to, you know, the, the face is centered within the canvas and it just doesn't engage, you know, the viewers so much. So I really wanted to make this a piece that showed his personality and his hands, you know, the way that he, um, you know, there was such gentleness, such strength in his hands and they... For me, hands have as much character as faces do. And um, capturing his character came with capturing his hands just as much. This piece was, um, I think, the fourth time I painted these young ladies, um, little girls, I should say. Um, they're beautiful little girls, and their mom hired me, found me to paint a portrait um, of the girls in front of a playhouse. Uh, that was the idea we came up with. Uh, in front of the playhouse that their grandfather had built for them, and in their backyard I did that portrait. She had, you know, gone out and found the perfect dresses and had been planning this for a year. She's an interior decorator and knew exactly what she wanted. So we created that painting, and then... Uh, the two little girls were so photogenic that I ended up taking um, several photographs and doing a couple other paintings, which she purchased from me. Um, she ran out of space, and, and um, this one still remains in my collection. It actually has been an incredible showpiece for me. Every time I get out to promote my business, I have it with me. Um, I think it's one of my favorites, and, and maybe that's why I haven't let go of it. But um, this piece is... Uh, the prodigies. Cecilia was a model that I hired for um, a couple of my classes. I was teaching Grisaille methods and um, you know even though I told you that I gave up the Grisaille um, painting, Grisaille just means the gray tones um, and it's the it's a method that the Renaissance artists use, and the history, the theory bef 
about Grisai, um, I'll tell you a little bit about that before I go back to the subject and the setting. Um, the theory behind uh, Grisai's and glazing is that um, in the old days they used to use a lead-based primer and um, supposedly um, as you lay layer over layer over layer of pigment encased in oil, um, the pigment, the light ref refracts off of the pigment so you get more depth in your painting. So a lot of times you go to museums and you see these gorgeous paintings and you notice how shiny they are. Um, it has a lot to do with that glazing technique. As I said before, I still use it in my work. Um, I don't always do the underneath the grisaille, which is the gray and white um, study fully painted underneath. Um, I actually started with a brown um, painting underneath like uh, Raphael. And then I progressed into teaching the grisaille method and used the gray and white and also added in um, cool tones. I mean, I actually added in warm tones, which would have been brown and white. So I was using gray and white and brown and white to teach this class. Um, what I did was then, um, after I did that, I layered the color over the surface. Um, so this is a piece that I spent a lot of time, a lot of hours on. Uh, this one still is in my collection. Her name is Celia, and um, I also did a uh, nude of her, but I did this as I was teaching. I surely hope that you enjoyed my show, um, my narrative. It's been an incredible life of work, um, and this just touches on the surface of what I've done within the last um, couple of years, other than the portraits. And um, I just hope that you can get to my website or contact me, and I'd love to work with you.